no greater than that of New York City, has played an important role through the centuries in all facets of Europe's development, political, economic, and cultural. To understand Belgium, one should first get to know her cities. Her capital, Brussels, abounds in strange and beautiful contrasts. Her fine old cathedrals remind us that Belgium is traditionally Catholic, but freedom of religion is guaranteed by law. The royal palace reminds us that Belgium is a constitutional monarchy. As in the United States, governmental power is threefold, executive, legislative, and judicial. This is the Palace of Justice, one of Europe's most impressive buildings. And finally, Brussels' ancient market square gives proof of the fact that Belgium is an old country rich in history. The cobbled square is surrounded by perfect specimens of medieval and Renaissance architecture, including the guild houses, whose lavish decorations indicate the profession of the guild members, and the town hall, with its beautiful sculpture. Policemen direct us to the oldest citizen of Brussels, this humorous 17th century figure. While Brussels is an old city, it is also one of the gayest, most modern capitals in Europe. Americans feel at home here amid the traffic jams, billboards, and neon signs of the main street. And wide boulevards and stately roads lead out to the peaceful suburbs where apartment dwellers enjoy a quiet neighborhood and an orderly existence in the modern buildings for which Brussels is famous. Located in the residential section is one of Belgium's four national universities, the University of Brussels. The rival of Brussels in economic importance and architectural beauty is Antwerp, fourth largest seaport in the world and capital of Flemish culture and art. Could it be the influence of American soldiers that made ice cream so popular in Belgium? Well, they're happy and content with their suite, even though oblivious of the fact that the most beautiful Gothic spire in northwestern Europe is right behind them. Motorists from the west enter Antwerp through a tunnel beneath the Skelt River. If strangers are at first puzzled by Antwerp, by the exuberance of her people, by the Baroque architecture, they should remember that here Peter Paul Rubens created his masterpieces in the 17th century. They can visit his home, steep themselves in the colorful vitality of his paintings. Perhaps then they will understand the spirit of Antwerp. As a great seaport, Antwerp has always been a wealthy city. Conditioned by daily contact with the foreign patrons of their harbor, Antwerp citizens are modern and cosmopolitan in their attitudes. The superior harbor facilities of Antwerp, though she is 50 miles inland, are connected with the North Sea by the Skelt River. In addition, the Rhine and Meuse rivers, plus a network of interlinking canals, afford the city easy access to France and Germany thus making Antwerp a natural bridgehead for Western Europe's overseas trade. In the last pre-war year, her 30 miles of docks were on the registers of more than 50,000 vessels from all over the world. Today, Antwerp is busier than ever. Ghent, the most typical of Flemish towns, and the second largest port of Belgium is heavily laden with memories. Archaeological findings here prove that Ghent's history extends as far back as the 7th century. Dating from the 12th century is the remarkable Castle of the Counts, unique in Belgium and one of the most important buildings of its kind in Western Europe. Besides her claim to fame as a seaport, Ghent is a manufacturing and commercial town of first rank and also the renowned center of Belgian horticulture. Ghent's harbor, with its six miles of modern docks, is connected with the North Sea by one of Belgium's greatest canals. Barges of all sizes are the backbone of Belgium's important inland transportation system. In Belgium, when folks work, they work hard, and when they play, they put all their cares aside and play with vigor and enthusiasm. Ghent sportsmen take their archery seriously. The town champion is an honored man. 
And there he is, the champion, the portly old gentleman who takes great pride in his skill. Belgium has many local and national holidays and a host of special religious festivals. The effervescent Belgians would be lost without an excuse for frequent street singing and dancing. Here they've come out to watch a local group dressed up in costumes. For a solid week in July, merrymaking citizens of Ghent closed down their shops and factories and thronged the streets with song and laughter. Each night they dance in the public squares which have been gaily illuminated for the occasion. It's festival time in Flanders. Of all the Flemish towns, Bruges is the most perfect in quaint medieval charm. Centuries ago, Bruges was a wealthy inland port, a thriving commercial city. Exquisite buildings like this 14th century town hall remain as beautiful mementos of a glorious past. Jan van Eyck and Hans Memling, 15th century Flemish artists and both citizens of Bruges, are among the greatest painters who have glorified Belgium. Notice the stepped gables on the houses, a feature prevalent in all 17th century architecture of the lowlands. Lace originated in Flanders, and Bruges is the queen of the lace cities. Little children learn the art in school, and whole families make their living this way. Lace making is one of the few remaining cottage industries in Belgium. The entire North Sea coast of Belgium, only 40 miles in length, is in reality one long beach. Like the Americans, Belgians dearly love to trek to the seashore come summertime. They have built fashionable seaside resorts every mile or so along their short coastline. By auto, train, and even on tandem bicycles, the vacationists arrive. The boardwalks are lined with popular hotels and concessions, Belgians of all classes are able to enjoy the fine white sand and the brisk waters of the North Sea coast. This is a favorite vacation spot, not only with Belgians, but with many other Europeans. Belgians are notoriously thrifty. Look, they've even found a happy use for the wartime amphibian. For those who have the luck, as well as the cash, the casino at Zuta is an irresistible attraction. And of course, all the resort towns offer a variety of sports other than swimming, tennis, golf, riding, fishing, and family outings in strange contraptions like these. Is it a bike or a car? Well, anyhow, it's plenty of exercise. Belgium is divided into French-speaking Wallonia to the south and Dutch-speaking Flanders to the north. Brussels is located between these sections in the bilingual province of Brabant. Generally speaking, Wallonia is industrial, Flanders agricultural, though since the discovery of the Limburg coal mines, industry has gradually been moving northwards. Because of her important agricultural product, flax, Flanders is Belgium's textile center. The Flemish first developed linen from their flax and then also imported wool and cotton, which they soon learned to weave into superior fabrics. Many thousands are employed by the textile industry. Some of them learn their trade in schools like this one. The linen factories turn out everything from dish towels to the finest, most expensive yard goods. Luxury linens are the specialty of the industry. Belgium is the most heavily populated country in Europe. Therefore, all of her food production is consumed at home. Although her fertile land is intensively cultivated, Belgium must depend heavily on imports to feed her population. Belgian horses are famous for their size and strength. Many an Indiana farmer is proud to own some. Today, the Belgian farmer is anxious to acquire more and more new equipment. He needs all the mechanized aid he can get in order to boost his production still higher. The two staple food articles he produces in greatest quantity are potatoes and rye. Principal industrial crops are sugar beets, flax, and tobacco. 
Belgian farmers have reason to be proud. Despite the fact that they have been tilling their soil for thousands of years, the yield per acre is reputed to be among the highest in the world. Because of her location, Belgium has been the battleground for almost every European war fought in the last few centuries. For that reason, many of the numerous holidays and parades that Belgians go in for so energetically have a connection with heroic battle dates of the historic past. Each little town has its sad or glorious memories to parade. Three times as many Belgians are engaged in industry as in agriculture. The Industrial Revolution, which began in England, spread through Belgium to the continent, giving Belgium a preeminent position in the machine age. Lying upon the northern side of an ancient mountain chain, long worn down to a low level, Belgian soil contained large amounts of coal as well as iron, lead, and zinc. Today, only coal remains in abundance, and almost the entire industrial energy of the country is derived from this important natural resource. The coal mines are located in both parts of Belgium. Heavy industry first developed in Wallonia, later in Flanders. Production includes coal, coke, pig iron, finished steel, and finished iron. The most important single factor in Belgium's continued industrial growth is her only colony, the Belgian Congo, which is a rich source of minerals and also of tropical products such as rubber, coffee, and oil. After World War II, Belgium's coal, needed by every industry in the country making consumer goods, was recognized as the key to economic recovery. The present daily average extraction of coal here is 85,000 tons. An indication of Belgium's heavy industrial activity is found in pre-war statistics. These show Belgian steel production to have been 501 tons of raw steel per 100 people. Compare this with the United States output of 470 tons per 100 people. Of her industrial products, those fabricated of steel are most important. Everything from nails to electrical machinery, ships, and railway equipment. Incidentally, Belgium's railway network is the most dense in Europe. Despite heavy industrialization, handicrafts still flourish in Belgium where clay used for china, crockery, and hand-turned pottery is found in abundance. The skilled craftsman is an honored man in this country. Not far from Belgium's industrial center is her vacation land. In a country as tiny as this, only slightly larger than the state of Maryland, folks are indeed lucky to have such a variety of holiday spots from which to choose. The Meuse River section in the rolling hills of central and southern Belgium is the happy choice of many. Along the river, they find beautiful and historic towns. For example, Namur, with her ancient bridge and citadel, is a favorite of all tourists, both Belgian and foreign. Here, the streets of Namur are crowded with spectators who have come to view the annual regatta. are inveterate bicyclists, hikers, and campers. Entire families arrive on foot, bike, or by auto to pitch their tents along the river bank. Perhaps because of their history as well as their country's location, Belgians have grown to combine the industriousness of northern lands with the gaiety of Latin peoples to the south. They are both practical and artistic, frugal, and fond of good living. In other words, they work hard, but when they play, they have the best of fun. Inhabitants of Dinan call their beautiful old town the Pearl of the Meuse River. Dinan, which lies at the foot of the Ardennes Mountains, is distinguished by an unusual 13th century cathedral and by an 11th century citadel which overlooks the town from a towering cliff. 
Since the year 1040, the ancient fort has figured in all the various wars in which Belgium has been involved. In World War II, heavy fighting by the American army resulted in the capture of the fort from the Germans. Now, with recent damages repaired, the fort is crowded with guided tours, and folks who climb atop it enjoy a superb view of the town and river. Southward from Dinan is the Ardennes mountain region. The Ardennes section, beautiful with its copper beechwood forests, winding roads and broad vistas, is not so heavily populated as industrial Belgium, except perhaps in summertime when vacationists by the thousand head this way. A cavalcade of hikers, bicyclists, motor cars and buses proves that Belgians who don't go to the seashore prefer the open country for that two weeks with pay for the leisurely holiday weekend. Chateau d'Ardennes, once a summer resort of the royal family, is now a luxurious hotel. Among others, Generals Eisenhower and Bradley enjoyed brief respites here during the late war. In 1944, Bastogne became famous as the Nut City, where General McAuliffe, when commanded by the Germans to surrender, replied in typical American fashion, nuts. Today, Bastogne is rapidly recovering from its war damages. Vacationists who don't bring along camping equipment find that the little ends of the Ardennes are comfortable as well as picturesque. In spite of its size, Belgium has the scenic variety of a much larger country. How different this is from the lowlands of Flanders or the sunny beaches of the North Sea coast. Typical of Belgium's fashionable resort towns is Spa, whose healthful waters and mineral baths attract visitors from all over Europe. Standing at the gateway of this tourist region of the Ardennes is Liège, an important industrial city. Liège is the natural center for the coal mining and metallurgical industries in her neighborhood. Nearby is Val Saint Lambert, home of Belgium's famous glass factory. You see truly master craftsmen at work here, the glass blowers, etchers, and cutters of Val Saint Lambert. This glassware, most of it hand designed and executed by age old but infallible methods, has achieved world renown for its superb quality and beauty. Lace, linen, and handmade glassware are Belgium's exquisite contributions to the world market of luxury. Although Flanders grows the majority of Belgium's farm produce, there are sections in Wallonia and Brabant also that are noted for certain fruits and vegetables. One of these sections is located around the town of Hoylark, which could aptly be called the City of Glass. 37,000 sparkling greenhouses crowd the landscape. Growers specialize in superior hothouse grapes, plums, peaches, and tomatoes. Belgium's climate is temperate, but variable. Greenhouse culture here assures a plentiful supply of consistently perfect fruit. Of Belgium's four universities, Louvain is probably best known to Americans who contributed so largely to the reconstruction of its famous library after World War I. All of Belgium's young people take seriously the old adage of a sound mind in a sound body. Early they manifest that strong characteristic of their older countrymen, the ability to work industriously and the capacity to play hard, to do well and with enthusiasm everything they undertake. The typical Belgian is energetic and well-adjusted, ambitious both for himself and for his country. History has proved that his spirit is indomitable despite the succession of unwanted and devastating wars. Today, he looks to the future in his free country, confident in the knowledge that his government recognizes the equality of men and their inalienable right to progress and happiness. It is this philosophy that motivates the Belgian, whether at work or at play.